Welcome back to Generative Art on the Blockchain. Today is day three, so we are going to be doing three things today. One, we're going to be creating a new piece of generative art. Step two, we're going to be deploying it onto the blockchain with IPFS and Pinata. And then step three, uh, we will be minting the NFT. Let's get started. I'm interested today in just moving through, so we're just going to move on to shape today. Um, actually, something that excites me is the rotate, or this loop. This loop's really cool. We're going to go with that. So, we're in step number one, which is creating a new piece of generative art. First thing we want to do is remix it. That way we can create our own version of the project and... Uh, change it to make it ours. I'm still getting into the whole flow of being able to mint everything, so we're not going to do a lot of changes. I'm pretty much just going to change the coloring. Um, let's see where colors are black background. We've got background of zero, so I should have some colors saved already. Um, I'm not sure I do, so I'm going to head over to Twitter, Voice First AI, to grab a couple colors. I'm just going to grab... I'm not sure it's actually... Doing the color picker, pick the color. There we go. Okay, so there's our background color. I'm going to take that color code and make it our background. Boom. And now we just need the foreground color. And that is going to be this color. Take it. So last time I just got a screenshot, which is what I might have to do again today. One of the questions on my mind There we go. Okay, so now we have a pulsating, changing color. Let's take a second and look at what this P5JS code is doing. And actually, I want to create an account because the projects will expire. So not right now because I don't want everyone to see my password, but sometime in the future I'm going to create an account. That way all of my animations get saved. But it looks like we've got a setup function that creates a canvas, which is the height and width of our window then if it gets resized it will change the size of our canvas according to that which is nice so it dynamically updates on window resized and then we render a loop that draws the shape with p5 we give it a blue background with the hex color i put in we just set background equal to that then we center our shape in the screen with our x coordinate of half of the width of the screen and then the height of half of the height and then scales everything to the minimum edge of the canvas. Minimum dimension equals min, width, and height. Both of these are the dimensions of the screen, so our minimum dimension is going to be a min of width and height. Size is a fraction of the screen. Then we got size is minimum dimension times 5. Okay. And then we get the time in milliseconds, milliseconds divided by a thousand. How long we want the loop to be, one full cycle. Duration is five. Get a playhead from 0 0.1. And we use modulo to keep it within 0 0.1. Playhead equals time, which is milliseconds divided by 1000, which should give us seconds. So we've got number of seconds uh, the current time divided by 5 modulo 1. Get an animated value from 0 dot dot 1. We use playhead times 2 pi to get a full rotation. So now we've got animation is sine. Sine is probably a function of sine, trigonometric function. Playhead times pi, which I'm sure pi is just a value that P5 has, times 2. And then times 0.5 plus 0.5. Create an animated thickness for the strokeness. 
Then we've got thickness is minimum dimension, so the minimum size that we have times 0.1 times animate, which is going to change because it's a sine function, so this is where we get that pulsating thickness that changes. Then we've got no fill on our circle, and then we've got a stroke, which is going to be the second color that we gave. Stroke weight is going to be equal to thickness, so that thickness is going to be changing. The animation is that sine function. And then we want to draw a ellipse with our center, and our x is going to be up here, half of the width. So the center of our circle is half of the width. Height, the center of our circle is going to be half the height, half the width. And then size. And size. So I guess, I'm curious what the ellipse function does, but it looks like both of the sizes are going to be the same for both the x and y coordinates, and then our stroke weight is applied to that, to every shape that we draw. Um, and that is everything that I'm gathering from here. So we have now created a shape, um, and next step is we want to deploy it onto IPFS. So my question is, is it possible to export this as a GIF? Um, export P5JS as GIF. Let's see if it's possible. Exporting Canvas as a GIF. Okay. Let's try this create loop and see if it works. Missing a semicolon, we'll put a semicolon in there. Is it going to generate the GIF? Okay, it's looking frozen right now. Are we still running over here on Restream? We're looking green lights on Restream. But I'm not seeing export GIF glitch. Let's check out glitch.com. So my goal right now is to export this as a GIF. Can I export glitch project as GIF? to share is it possible for me to export this what's it going to export as in gzip okay I'm going to copy all this, and I don't like that I lost my little window. Okay, cool. So I've got my little window back, but I want to export this. Can I save this as a GIF? Can I save it as a GIF? We're just going to save it onto my downloads folder, and we're going to call it glitch.gif. It's looking just like a still image right now. We're going to try it again without my little loop. Save image as. Animation.gif. Give me a GIF, please. I don't want it to be a PNG. I want it to be a GIF. Okay, we'll look it up in the future how to actually generate a GIF, but for now we have it. 
So next thing we want to do is upload it to IPFS. So we've got our new piece of generative art. Now we're going to go over to Pinata, which is what we're using to uh, add our files to IPFS, the interplanetary file system. So now we're going to do the same thing I did last time. We're going to upload a file. We're going to upload from my downloads folder, I believe. It should be called animation.gif. We've got glitch.gif, which is probably good enough. There it is, animation.gif. All right. Let's upload it. OK, we've now uploaded our GIF. Um, so we've now uploaded it to IPFS. Next thing we want to do is mint the NFT. Now, I think one of the reasons why we are minting the metadata.json as the NFT instead of the actual image is because it's a much smaller size. However, I'm not sure that's the case. So let's go back to our video or our links for the tutorial of how we're actually uploading it. So my channel, videos, generative art, we're going to pause it, go down to the IPFS guide. Okay, so we've already done all the first stuff. We can skip past it all. Testing, okay, minting. Minting is where we're at. Okay, so now we want to create our metadata file. Let's go All right, we're back inside our code editor. Today we're going to modify, I'm gonna make a new folder called um, NFT metadata. I'm gonna move my original metadata and now I'm going to copy this, paste it, rename it day3.json. This one's gonna be called um, I'm just going to call it day three for now. Animated GIF, animated ellipse that I couldn't export animated. Okay, and now we need the actual image link from IPFS. So we'll go back to Pinata. Now we've got the animated GIF. I copy that animated. Why do I have this one up and close you? Now we paste the IPFS link. Paste it. Okay, save that. Let's go back to our tutorial. You can name it whatever you want. Image needs to point to the CID. Once you've done that, save it. Once you've started, head back. Okay, now I upload the metadata.json again. Okay, I'm gonna do what it's saying and I'm trying to understand why we are uploading the metadata file. Desktop notes in my projects folder. Experiments, 100 days of generative art, metadata day three, okay. So now we have our metadata uploaded. Okay. Now we are going to modify, let's change to deploy script. Okay. We've got the deploy script to deploy. Default network, run it, your NFT contract. Okay, our NFT contract is already deployed. Now we just need to mint it. Okay, so now let's modify our mint script. 
the mint script is what we are using to actually mint our NFT because we're going to use the same contract. So our wallet address that we want to own the NFT is going to be the same and our contract address that we're going to use to mint the NFT is going to be the same. The only difference is the URI that we're actually minting. So let's go back to our pinata. And I'm not sure why we're minting the JSON instead of the actual NFT. Or I'm sorry, instead of the actual animated file, but we're going to follow this again. They should know what they're talking about, but if we end up, I'm sure in future lessons, we're going to end up doing it differently. So now we've the only thing we've changed here is we've updated the URI of what it is we're minting. Um, so that should be it. Let's check one more time. It takes the URI from the metadata, your Ethereum address, save that file. Now we are going to run. Let's mint it. Let's mint our new NFT. Minting, minting, minting. Okay, looks like we minted it. Now I think we're going to want to run our next script, which should... This should actually output our original NFT, the first one we deployed, but we're going to... So this one ends with UKBT. Let's get that file. UKBT is our original one. So if we want to get the new one, we're going to get token script instead of... We're going to get it of two, because that is our newly deployed NFT should be the same owner and then this one ends with w o d w w o d w okay so we've now deployed and it's uh we can check it on the polygon blockchain by going to mumbai polygon scan and now i'm going to paste the contract address of the smart contract that we've been deploying everything to we should have a new transaction from one minute ago. Here's the transaction hash. And then we can see that it was an ERC721 token ID2. Um, and it looks like we ran the function mint. So we have minted a new NFT. Starting tomorrow, I think I'm probably going to switch this. Instead of being on the test net, we're going to deploy it on the Polygon main chain. That way, this is all real instead of just playing around. But we have just minted a new NFT. We still have a lot to go, a lot to learn. But each day, we're going to just do a little bit more of working with this intersection of generative art and the blockchain so that we can understand it, go through the motions, build up the muscle memory, until we can stop following our tutorial and actually come up with something new and unique and exciting that no one else has built before. Um, if I can see far, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants. Thank you to everybody that has contributed to this blockchain web three revolution so far. Um, we've definitely got a lot more learning to go, but we have just minted a new NFT. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comments. Otherwise, thank you for joining us. This is Sweets signing off.